surrender. I've been asked to talk to you about surrender. It's a, it's a privilege to be able to talk to you about surrender, the spiritual principle of surrender. What is surrender? Is it a sign of weakness? Is it a sign of strength? Is it common sense? Is it just an inevitable conclusion? Um, possibly all of the above in stops and starts. Does that make sense? It probably includes all of the above. Nothing is absolute other than death and taxes apparently, but surrender. You may hear if you're just on the bridge from active addiction and you're trying to get into early recovery, it may be that if you are exploring the 12-step program, particularly if you're, if you're considering the 12-step program, you're gonna hear terminolo terminology such as uh, unconditional surrender. It's nonsense. There is no such thing as unconditional surrender. Okay, particularly if you're just climbing out of that swamp of chemical dependency or a depression or um, just coming out of treatment. Unconditional surrender, it doesn't exist. It's a myth. It places a really high expectation. It actually sets us up for failure, in, if you want my opinion. Um, un it's like un unconditional love. I'm not able to. Okay, even with my children, sometimes with my children. <laughs> I never actually, but the love I feel for them subsides from time to time. So it's not actually unconditional. And neither is the spiritual principle within me to surrender. Why do so many people have so many problems with the concept of surrender? Why do so many of us reduce this essential principle from the process from being the process of a daily discipline of the heart and we reduce it to an event like something that happens based on the fact that we've seen the need people suggest that we need to surrender and it makes sense to us if we've been wrestling and fighting with addictions and trying and failing and relapsing if we've been on the madness cycle and somebody says you need to send you need to surrender you need to give up the fight to win the war it almost kind of resonates with us it very nearly makes sense and we can we can most of us can see okay i get it but i don't know how to do it and the sad fact is if in the addiction treatment context we are told to um that we need to apply the spiritual principle of surrender to step one, etc., 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 and we hear it from counsellors as well. And then when the counsellor is actually asked the dreaded question, "What does it mean to surrender? Tell me how to surrender. I don't know how to surrender." The more often than not, and I've seen it myself too many times the most counsellors particularly if they have not come from an addiction culture background most counsellors can very often come up with some hairy fairy talcum powder statement like yeah just let the universe do what the universe needs to do man i don't want to trust my future to the universe man it's riddled in covid19 it's riddled in gang warfare drug addiction earthquakes volcanoes famine pestilence I'm sorry, I can't surrender to something that's not really looking after itself that well, if I'm perfectly honest. So this kind of hairy fairy wishy-washy is really the counsellor saying, I don't know, man, work it out. Work it out. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out some dynamics that I've seen as an addictions counsellor in over 25 years. I'm gonna they're, they're indisputable, man. They're in our they've been in our face for years and years. Okay, the person asking the question, how can I surrender, is clearly not in recovery yet. They may be in the transition, they may have not used or boozed for however long, they might be in a three month program, and towards the end of the three months they're still asking, how can I surrender? And I don't mean this with any sense of disrespect to their efforts, but without understanding the concept of surrender, you can't get into recovery, 
all right? But as I say, it's not a decision that we make, it's not an event. So when in a treatment context, if you're told you need to surrender, etc., etc., it's placing an unrealistic expectation on you, okay? It's placing an expectation that you would see within someone who is actually in recovery and who is actually practicing this spiritual discipline on a day to day. It's a process. Surrender is cyclic. Some days we're all right with it, other days we're not so good with it. And it's cyclic, it comes and goes. And our ability to surrender needs to be practiced in baby steps. We can't just unconditional surrender. It's hogwash, man. It's good theory, but that's all it is. Experience has repeatedly proven to me how the principle of surrender comes in stages, trials, and errors. That's how simple this is. You need to take the pressure off yourself, man. You're not gonna get this right first time. And you might surrender brilliantly today, and then tomorrow you seize control back in celebration of surrendering yesterday. It's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And surrender, the principle of surrender grows. It is progressive. And it comes in stages, trials and errors. It's not found by saying a prayer because prayer is spiritual. And it's not found in some dramatic protest about how bad life is. And then we end our protest with, oh, well, yeah, whatever. That's not surrender, that's protest. That's bitterness, that's a sense of injustice. That's a sense of, that's anger because you're not actually in, it's not surrender. Surrender is cyclic. It's character developing. Just like the two sugar levels of integrity rule. We've got a YouTube clip there, two sugar levels of integrity. Go and have a look at that because surrender is developed in the same way that that level of integrity is developed, okay? It's developed and it becomes more rewarding when surrender is applied in secret, quietly. When I want what I want and I'm in that, yeah, I can feel the mental wheels turning about something that I want and all of a sudden I don't just want it, I want it now, I want it too much. And when I go into that cycle and I see myself spiraling, surrender is learning to see myself and to hear myself. And then no matter how convinced I might be that I need something or no matter how convinced I might be that I'm actually right on, on my side, that my side of the argument is the right side, no matter how convinced I am, I have to learn to see myself when I'm trying to win an argument rather than trying to convey a point. I, I, can, I can go into a, uh, and a disagreement with someone that increases into an argument and winning the argument becomes more important than whatever the disagreement was about. And me winning the conflict, the reality is, me winning the conflict is nowhere near as beneficial for me or for, or for my recovery than it is for me to simply get out of the ring with maybe some degree of dignity, just bow out of the conflict and allow a personal internal growth principle to take root in me. I don't have to win every argument. I don't have to have the last word. And like every character growth discipline, it takes practice and it takes baby steps. And once again, if you're in the, if you're trying to get out of that swamp, and you're going into the ehab.care program, you're going into a window of personal discovery. Your surrender levels are going to increase as we go, it is progressive. But you really gotta start now at this point in with baby steps, all right? When you come up to some kind of challenge from Big John in one of his lectures, and there's a resistance to you, there's a resistance to it, 
Or if I say something in one of my lectures and you find yourself recoiling, ah, who does this guy think he is? Please try to stop thinking who I think I might be. Okay? Please maybe at that point of contention, maybe at right at that moment, maybe try the discipline of saying, hang on a minute, this is bothering me, man. I need to listen to this a little bit closer. Surrender. It's baby steps. It's a self-discipline. It's a self-control. It's a self-regulation di discipline practice. But these are all spiritual dynamics that bring spiritual growth and psychological balance. You don't have to win every argument. You don't have to have the last word. Just because you want the drug doesn't mean you have to have it. Every character growth discipline takes baby steps. That's how it starts. This is not an event. In the rehab context, okay, I've seen guys come in. We get men and, people, men and women coming into the facility and they caused havoc at home. The emotional levels are so high. The stress levels are so high. And what we, we, we see one of two disciplines. Very often we see one of two... Um, coping mechanisms okay it's this is their way of coping with the shame and the guilt and the fear and the dread and the loss and the regret and the injustice they become um, uh, mr. and mrs. perfect the lady comes out of her room after three or four days in the clinic the lady comes out of her room and she's all dressed up and her hair's perfect and everything's in place even down to the way she sits in the group context. She'll sit so prim and proper in the group context, frozen in emotion. And, and then on the other side of the group, you've got the guy, he's all spruced up. He's in, a, he's in an addiction treatment clinic, man. These guys are in an addiction treatment clinic. And you would honestly think it was a beauty contest. He's there with his big chest and his big arms and all this kind of stuff. And... My suggestion is, I leave it. I leave it for a while. I let them get away with it for a while. I, kind of, I can kind of sense when it's time to step in. And then when that time arrives, I'll say to the lady, right, tomorrow I don't want you to wear any makeup. <gasps> why? That's why. Or I'll say to the guy, right, okay, I don't mind you going to the gym, but you don't go to the gym five times a week. You, you maybe go to the gym Tuesday night and Thursday night, twice a week. I'll tell you what, twice a week and then Saturday morning. Why? That's why. It's because you want it too much. You want what you want too much. Okay? And at that point, it's where we have to go inward and say, this guy's got a variety of qualifications. This guy's got so many years clean time this guy this counselor is a counselor i'm just trying to climb out of a hole a spiritual psychological relational rubik cube everything i touch has turned to broken hurt stolen or infected and so the exercise that exercise there that pause just stop let me listen to what's been saying let, let me listen to what this guy's saying and let me trust what he's saying is for my benefit yeah i want i want i want i want but that's been the story of my life anyway right now i'm gonna stop and i'm gonna try to follow the suggestions that's surrender it's trying to not have your way because if you go into a treatment center from chronic alcoholism and they say, right, you need to surrender to the program. You know nothing about the program. You've got a trust deficit, okay? You don't trust anybody. And you're told you're in a 28-day program. So they say, right, step one is, is powerless and unmanageability. You have to surrender and trust the process. Bulldust. Impossible. But they'll still take your money off you. They'll still take your medical aid away from you. And in, listen to me, man, I'm talking from a position of having owned a clinic that's done all this stuff, okay? So now that COVID-19 came along and leveled the ground between us all and the um, 
the private sector addictions treatment clinic has been closed this is what we need to surrender to it's time to close it's time to change it's time to do something differently it's time to do the same thing but differently because of the quality of our impact we have to do what we do but i don't want to go into a fight to try and make the business work this is not business this is relationship we've got spiritual psychological and relational cancer we need each other please try to hear what i'm saying and irrespective of whether or not you agree with the personality and you're not going to agree with me all the time i'm going to make sure you don't agree with me all the time but if you go once again let me just highlight the two sugar rule the two sugar levels of integrity go and have a look at that youtube clip on the, on the ehab.care youtube channel go and listen to it man because it's really going to challenge you about your secret integrity levels and that's where surrender has to be surrender has to be a spiritual principle not an act of bravado as an exhibitionist so that the group can say isn't colin doing well that's surrender it's a process we start with baby steps and it's a process it's progressive just like the addiction you only started smoking cigarettes then it was smoking cigarettes and telling lies then it was smoking more cigarettes and manipulating for money to buy more cigarettes then it was smoking cigarettes in in secrecy at school in the bike shed then it was making it a game and turn let's go and have a fag and you enjoy you you progress into this culture of saying no when you should say yes and saying yes when you should say no and it all starts in secret and it all starts with baby steps well so does recovery so does personal integrity and so does surrender thank you for coming to the ehab.care website that in and of itself is a sign of surrender we want you to know that you're in good company man okay i'm going to just step back now i want you to think about this i do encourage you to go and watch the um the two sugar levels of integrity youtube clip let me just check that i'm not missing anything out okay yeah surrender surrender i surrender surrender to win there's a thousand cliches that you can use but until you make those cliches a subjective reality within the heart when it comes to mind and mood altering substances when you surrender to use you can never ever again estimate if ever it's going to stop you can surrender to use but once you jump back onto that cycle that madness cycle you've got no say over when it stops okay so in this transitional period or if you're struggling in recovery this is what surrender sounds like maybe maybe i just maybe i don't really need to have the last word maybe my opinions and my viewpoints really do need to be looked at because everything that i've tried so far has reduced me to a spiritual psychological relational bomb site okay we can fix that guys it's what we do it's what we do it's what we're always going to do this is now addiction treatment in our opinion at its finest you don't have to travel around the world to come to my facility again all you got to do is download www.ehab.care get into the program get into the courses on the program it's a developing platform but i'll tell you what man the material that's going onto this platform is going to be an absolute game changer within the addiction treatment field welcome once again and goodbye once again and god bless you all